Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the Furby Dinosaur Q95 which is a micro brushless quadcopter which resembles the Ishin Lizard which unfortunately I don't have anymore. Inside this box we're getting the quadcopter, four propeller guards which I'm not going to use in this review and one set of 2035 jam fan propellers these propellers are great and I've used them in other builds. Besides these items, we're not getting anything else. There is no instruction manual. And by the way, you can get this quadcopter in two versions. One is the plug and play and the other one is an FR Sky version. Unfortunately, I got only the plug and play, so I will have to provide my own receiver. And right now the price is the same, so I don't see any reason not to get the FR Sky version. The motors of these quadcopters are 1104 6000 kV motors. They don't have any brand name on it and they are very similar to the motors that were placed on my Lizard 95. These are the same motors. Their shape is not the same but they are still very similar. The 4-in-1 ESC board is a 20 ampere BLLES ESC controller. On the back we've got a big buzzer with two length indicators besides it. And the flight controller is an F3 flight controller with a built-in OSD which is unfortunately not being used because this camera is an all-in-one camera with switchable output of 25, 100 and 200 milliwatts but there is no video in and video out in this camera so the OSD is not going to be overlaid on your screen. I really think that Furby should have used the same camera that is used on the X140 this is a clone of the Runcam Micro Swift 1 and because this space is very wide it can be accommodated very easily so what I'm going to do in this video I'm going to remove this camera and use the Cardix Micro S1 FPV camera which performs great. Besides that I'm going to add my own receiver. This is an XSR FRSCAR receiver. And I'm also going to use the full speed RC VTX. This is a piggy VTX that is going to be attached on the back of the Cadex. Right now it's on sale for about $14 and I think I paid 20 bucks when I bought it from Banggood. So it's a pretty good price. And from videos that I've seen it performed pretty well. So I'm looking forward to test it out. Besides these modifications, I'm also going to replace the GST connector with an XT30 connector and also use this V-Race antenna by Actuna, which according to my test performed a little bit better than a linear antenna. So I'm going to use it instead of the provided linear antenna along with the full speed RC VTX as well. The receiver is going to be connected to these ports over here. If I'm not wrong, I think this is the art one. Later on, I'm going to check on Betaflight and confirm that it's working with these ports. So over here is the ground, then the plus 5 volts, then the signal. And over here we have the video in and video out ports. So I'm going to connect the camera to the ports over here. Of course, before modifying anything in the quadcopter and even configuring it on Betaflight, I recommend to remove the propellers just to prevent any injuries and it's also going to make your life easier because the propellers are not going to be on your way. The weight of the quadcopter before the modifications is 61.8 grams and if we add the XSR receiver it's 65.2 grams. The thickness of the bottom plate is 2 millimeters and the thickness of the side plates is about 1.2 millimeters. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to modify this quadcopter and the full speed RC VTX, the Cadex camera, the XSR receiver and the XT30 connector, then configure it on beta flight, take it for a test flight and in the end of the video I'm going to give you my final thoughts about this quadcopter. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video.
So overall, I really enjoyed flying this upgraded version of the Furby Q95. And I think that if you already have this model or you're thinking about getting it, you should do the upgrade, especially upgrading to a micro CCD camera is very easy because the frame is very wide and it will allow you to get a better version because the quality of this camera is much better than this all-in-one camera. In addition, it will allow you to overlay the OSD on your video, which will provide you with great information like your battery status and flight modes. And finally, I think that this VTX from Full Speed RC performed very well and even though the antenna got disconnected a few times during the flight and in one of my crashes also I lost one of these antennas because I didn't secure it in the beginning and you should secure it with a zip tie because it got lost in the grass and I searched for it for half an hour and I couldn't find so I had to go back home and connect a new one so long story short even though it got disconnected this VTX survived and I reached out to Louis from Full Speed RC and he actually told me that this VTX can survive even without an antenna being connected to it for a long period of time so it's a good thing to know because I thought that if an antenna wouldn't be connected for 10-20 seconds it will be toasted and I was proved wrong. Between these batteries I think that the one I enjoyed flying the most was the GNB 450 mAh 3S battery and I don't think the Furby battery performed very well because I could get only about two minutes of flight time out of this battery whereas I could get about three minutes of flight time from the 450 mAh 2S battery and about the same amount of time with the 3S GNB battery. As always I thank you for watching my video I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful if you have any questions about this quadcopter feel free to ask it in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on my next videos goodbye